started into clay because I was appointed as an art teacher at Melrose High School in the late 90s and I knew nothing about clay. And having to teach it and not knowing anything didn't sit so well with me. So I actually went and did classes at the Potter Society with Chris Harford, amongst others. And as soon as I touched clay, I just fell in love with it. Um, and for me, I'm a 3D person. I'm better in 3D, whether it's a sculptural item or a bowl or there's something about how I think in 3D that is much more satisfying to me than a drawing. Also, I'm not that great a drawer, though if I practiced, I would be better. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I guess the, the real thing with clay is it is endless possibilities. And I've cut a few of those off for myself because I, I'm just too distractible. I'm not going down the wood firing. I'm not going down the soda firing line. I love surface, I love colour. I've really been entranced by the work I've started to do in the economy. I love the fact that I can build something that's quite large. I can make something that's absolutely tiny and they're all out of the same medium and they all have their own personality. How, how one talks to another. Sometimes I feel my practice is almost too eclectic. Um, but I guess that's who I am and I'm just gonna have to live with it. <laughs> so yeah, I guess really it is just that endless possibilities for me that clay gives me. And I love, I love sitting with the, I love the feel of the clay in my hands. Not so much when I go to work. But it's great when you get to the point in your practice where you go, I want to make that. And you can. Every now and then it might be the second one that's that, not the first. But most of the time now, I can have something in my head or a shape in my journal and I can make that shape um, unless I've taken it too far. But it is also about all that built knowledge of how, how to shape support themselves where is the where is the weight in that bowl sitting is it going to slump where does the foot need to be in order to support that plate all of those things you learn over time mostly through mistakes thinking about how I want this to be. Thinking about that curve at the bottom there. My first pull's always straight up and I pull into this curved finger which just kept, keeps everything nice and centered. Well, there's no real pressure, but you can see where the, except where my finger was, you can see where the clay is running on that hand. Just keeps everything in. I throw quite, with the wheel running quite fast. when I'm making shapes, they need to be reasonably self-supporting. Mm. If there's too much overhang, it will give up. Yeah. It will go south.
journaling is my it's my life I if I cannot remember what I did um, and so writing stuff down helps enormously because I can come back later and I, I can say oh yes I used that color and I used that stain and I used these things I can find all that it's a record of my process journaling also is a way I develop ideas um, particularly in my art side of my practice where I'm thinking about what is it I want to say um, sometimes it's about playing with colour, it's about playing with shape, it's about scribbling a whole lot of rubbish onto the page until it all starts to come together. So um, I have my journals, they're all numbered um, and I go back through them regularly and I look for things. Um, when I was at uni, I, my journals were really lovely. I put coloured things in them and I made the effort of printing out photos and putting them in and I should do that more because it actually makes a really good reference but it is another job to do. Um, so my journals are often not very pretty but they are incredibly useful and they do many jobs. So I'm thinking this bowl I'm looking for a much more conical shape than some of the others that we've been looking at before. Working again, you'll notice I'm always controlling that rim, working down. My fingers also are sitting at that really key point, which is this join here, where the floor of the pot meets the wall. They're just delicious and I love the way you get quite a, quite a tonal and character change with the difference. So like this red goes from being really rich to real baby pink. I'm a teacher by inclination as well as trade, I think, and I just love to watch people learn. I love to be able to, to walk through the workshop and someone's struggling with something and you say, just do this. And they go, oh, and that works. And you've made someone's time better, their work better, and you made everyone, everyone's got a smile. And there's a really nice, there's a generosity about teaching that I really enjoy. It's just watching people develop. It's a lovely thing to see.
like many potters and many, many tools, and I go back to the same ones over and over again. I have a couple of nut ribs, that, nut tool ribs that are just beautiful. Um, but a few things that you might not think of. I am very reliant on old bed sheets. I use them to control the drying of things. I use them very much in my Nerikomi work to keep the surfaces clean and clear and to roll porcelains out on and to look after all that stuff. Um, a really, some really good microfiber cloths, fabulous for cleaning up the studio and also wonderful for polishing off all the dust before you glaze stuff. Really makes a huge difference. So sometimes it's just the simplest things. So this process is cleaning up the surface. It's also compressing. So the more cleaning up you do at this point, the less cleaning up you have to do later. But what I will do is, as soon as that's firm enough, I'll flip it off. It'll hold its shape quite well. And I'll flip it up and then cover it up with cloths to let it dry nice and slowly. I don't use plastic much unless I really need to equalize between two bits. I tend to just dry under cloths because it's all very thin and very even. So there's no thicker bits. I try not to invest too much in it until it comes out of the kiln. But sometimes you get very excited about something and you think, oh, and then it comes out of the and it's crap. <laughs> so I try to hang on to the idea that I can always make another one. And I think that's a really key thing. The more in, that you invest in something and you lock yourself into a way of thinking about it, the more you're likely to make a mess of it because you tighten up. So you have to be loose about it. You have to allow it allow for the fact that it could just go belly up. But yeah, there are lots of times. And um, with the Nerikomi, one of the lovely things about building a block of Nerikomi is you have an idea of what it is, but you don't really know until you slice through and there's the reveal. That's pretty exciting. <laughs>